You know, I can remember when there were no bears in Harlan County. The bears coming back into these mountains is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to eastern Kentucky. We want the public to see the bears. In the past 14 years or so, we have progressed from seeing a bear maybe once or twice a year to now, during the summer months, we get daily sightings and sometimes multiple sightings in just one day. There was a family uh, cooking T-bone steaks from what I hear, some pretty big ones. Twice, we have had bears basically come up and just push people off of the tables and take the food, yes. just kind of surveying the scene, and identifying some areas that this nuisance, bears, this nuisance bear has been uh, hitting. This bear is just consistently, uh, on a 24-hour basis, pretty much just makes a loop to all the trash cans in the area. It's a concern for public safety. My rangers have hazed the bears. They've used cracker shells, they've used uh, paintball guns, they've used rubber bullets, uh, rubber buckshot to try to push the bears away. This is where she appears and disappears. Or you shouldn't find bears, I should say, coming out, um, acquiring food from these garbage containers uh, like this. When there's food out in the wild that they can get, um, this food is much easier to obtain and these bears become conditioned human related foods. Some people have been viewing the bears for quite some time. They've become very proprietorial in their approach. These are their bears. These aren't the state's bears, they're not the park's bears, they're not fish and wildlife's bears. These are their bears and they want to see them. So they will do things to encourage the bears coming out to where they're visible, to where they can get pictures of them. This involves baiting cans, it involves putting food out, maybe not picking everything up off the table and throwing it in the garbage can. This is a dumpster site. Accessibility is extremely easy, and there are actually these explicitly worn paths um, coming down from the uh, higher elevations down towards these dumpsters where the bears come in. And they come out at night and eat out of the garbage can. That's just going to lure not only bears, but any kind of wildlife in to eat. Keeping your garbage picked up, keeping your yard picked up, keeping, the, keeping it out of the, uh, out of the bear's uh, area to where the bear just don't know it's there. So we just set our garbage out on the day of the garbage pickup and uh, try to keep it put up the best we can. Bears have become reliant on human-related foods in, in, in lieu of relocating these bears are really only other options to destroy these bears. And so really this is a last chance uh, for some of these animals. This is one of our department culvert traps is what we call it. Preferably the first and best way to handle a nuisance, nuisance animal. <laughs> What we have here is a bear that uh, was causing some damage to a local resident and so we've taken the preventive measures and went ahead and trapped this bear on site. The bear was initially hanging around uh, an individual's residence um, for fairly lengthy periods of time, coming out during daylight hours, uh, very habituated to the area, apparently to humans. If you have a bear such as this one that was in, you know, causing property damage, uh, hanging around, not responding to conditioning, then you don't want to leave it in that neighborhood once you catch it. 143. This bear has been sedated, uh, so it's pretty much unconscious right now. Allows us to safely work on the animal and collect data that we need uh, prior to releasing the animal and putting a radio collar on it. The radio collars are extremely helpful, especially with nuisance bears. Uh, it allows us to monitor their movements and keep track of where these animals are so that if they uh, return to any type of nuisance behavior or activity, uh, we can identify that animal's there and likely culprit without having to see the animal. They're starting to come down into the neighborhoods and uh, eventually uh, something tragic's going to happen. This easily accessible garbage uh, just creates behaviors in bears uh, that creates them more bold, 
uh, worm raisin it tends to associate people with food. Once that happens, uh, that's a very tough behavior to break once it escalates to a certain threshold. You started getting that help. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with you? You have to convince these people that, look, yes, it's great that you get to see the bear, but if this bear becomes too orientated to people, sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt. She's pretty much a, a cub factory in that she's consistently uh, producing relatively large numbers of uh, cubs. Uh, this year she has four cubs with her. Uh, two years ago she had five cubs, which is extremely rare for black bears. Uh, unfortunately, this behavior that's allowing her to produce these cubs is the same behavior that they're learning by following her. And unless caught soon and modified or relocated, these cubs will certainly exhibit the exact same behavior. Now, we spent several days attempting to um, capture this female that we're looking for right now. Um, we were unsuccessful. There's a lot of, um, I guess, negative sentiment towards um, some of the work we have to do when it involves trapping and relocating bears. Um, everybody likes to watch and view and see bears. Unfortunately, uh, these bears really are a safety concern when they become habituated to humans and they can inflict serious injury. People just need to realize that bears are, are a wild animal. Uh, often they're not portrayed so on television, but uh, they're wild. And, uh, you know, closer than um, normal contact can have some pretty um, dramatic results. If we handle it correctly, we can learn to live with the bears.